Good evening to you from wherever you are joining us. This is brunch time with Mayegun. Please read the caption of the broadcast as usual. The description as well. Dangote Falami versus Nigeria. Tifnumbu versus Dangote. Now, a lot of you will understand what is meant by state capture. Yeah, nobody is really protected. Uh, I mean, you know, you are not protected until you are probably protected. <laughs> Tell everybody that Mayegun today, it is still about Aliko. He is now offering his uh, refinery to Nigeria. Buy it from me. Buy me out. And then you can save yourself from the monopolistic tag. And yes, like uh, uh, you too. I kind of like the fact that a trailer don't pass their miss, but I do not buy into that emotional blackmail or gaslight or gaslighting that uh, some of uh, the Dangote's uh, apologists have. I mean, they are trying to throw at you right now. Eh? Is about Nigeria. All of us should speak out. Oh, okay. And Maybe when we want to start this talk, we should begin to call on those that uh, Nigeria has happened to, especially in the last one year alone. <laughs> start with Landmark. <laughs> so Dangote has been frustrated so much that he couldn't believe it that for the first time, the government in Nigeria is turning full circle, full time on him. So he's saying, take it from me. Take it. Thank you so much. Uh, good morning once again, and top of the moment to you. Okay, let's save ourselves at uh, the time. If you have been following the Robodion between Aliko Dangote and Tifnumbu's government, hmm, then there is an update for you. A lot probably has been said, and a lot is still being said as we speak. But as much as a lot of people are going to be whipping a uh, different kind of sentiment around this conversation, you and I probably will be on the side of Aliko Dangote if they have not uh, used his same refinery to swindle Nigeria, that nobody even know where that money is. I mean, it should have been a private business. Or, I mean, honestly, a private business, something of, as they are saying, maybe something of pride uh, to Nigeria, having... Uh, what do you call it? A 600, 650,000 barrel every day refinery. That's the biggest in the world, according to demo. So that should be a good thing. But if you are a Nigerian watching me, I'm not saying you shouldn't pity Dangote because your pity won't do anything. It won't change anything. You see, uh, Nigeria will happen to everybody. It's just going to happen to everybody differently. So before you pity or you start your pity party, there are a few things you should possibly, eh? You should know. Dangote is speaking out now. And these are the things that ordinarily you and I will probably just hear them somewhere and we will call them gossip. Dangote is uh, a quota system billionaire in Nigeria. Give it to him, okay? He has all the tools to make him believe in Nigeria. If any of you have the same government uh, privilege 
that Dan Gote and his business that they have had, eh? You will be interested in Nigeria. Yeah, well, why would you go elsewhere? Eh? In a country that are criminal politicians, why they are borrowing money, devaluing their currencies, this is spread on the rest of the country. But there are some certain group of people, businesses, that enjoys the selected government subsidy. And you would think, since this, gov since this businesses enjoys government subsidy, that should reflect on uh, their product and everything to, I mean, to the end users. No, that's not the case. When Nigerians were buying a dollar for a thousand naira, the likes of Dangote were picking it up like you know, like 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 coins. They were picking it up for two hundred naira, two hundred fifty naira to a dollar. Do you see the gap? That's the competition there, completely taken away for him. They do not eh, have to, except for his refinery. They, 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 I mean, Nigerian successive government. They've never really actually have to pack money and give Dan Gote. It has always been the subsidy he enjoys, the waivers he enjoys, and not many businesses have such. So you can compete with Dan Gote. If you decide that you want to go and invest in something and you need Forex, then you'd have to go to banks, Abi, or where? Dan Gote will walk straight into the central bank. They will give him a different rate. And if you both of you go for the same business, how are you going to come back and sell it the same way? Eh? We never reflect, never. And we've never heard anything. Right? So it's always been like, oh, I, I, I mean, I'm going to invest in the cement. Oh, you're going to invest in the cement. Great. In that case, right? Here is the license. They gave him the license. Okay, yeah. Start making cement. They discovered I couldn't make enough. Nigeria was only short of cement. Obasanjo gave a license to Ibeto. Ibeto to go and bring in cement and flood Nigeria market with cement. Until Dangote, cement will be fully operational and maybe will be able to serve the local markets, Nigeria. It took Ibeto to court. The uh, Fulani Emirates, they mounted pressure on Obasanjo, the same Obasanjo that gave approval. Ibeto has already took money, took loan, and all of that. I mean, expecting the, what do you call it? Expecting is uh, tons of cement to flood Nigeria. Boom. Obasanjo can see that uh, same uh, import license they gave to him. He can no longer bring the cement. Go and read about the story of uh, Ibeto. So he is now angry. He's sad. That yes, Nigerians are always saying that Dangote enjoys Monopoly is always monopolistic. And the criminals in government have always played the ball until Tifnumbu came. We didn't know that uh, the Tifnumbu criminals, the Tifnumbu Agberos, they were telling you that the Igbos were coming to take your land in Lagos. They were coming to take your lands in Lagos. You didn't know that they were the ones selling your lands to whoever was ready to give them the money. Even if they have to chase the village, chase all the villagers away, the landowners. So then God had to come out and say, hey, I didn't get any incentive from them. I paid money. I gave them $100 million. So why are they treating me like this? They are looking for investors. Great. But why are these politicians treating me like this? And that is actually something that somehow, somehow, you might get drawn into becoming sympathetic to him. I mean, we are all humans, okay? So we can separate both. And you can, in that, at that point, right? Because of facts. He has enjoyed this monopolistic run for decades because the criminal politicians were getting their shares and he was getting his own uh, leverage in the system everything was fine it was supposed to be the same abi it was supposed to be the same on that tifnumbu but something is wrong the people that sold him 100 million dollars land and then gave 4.4 million dollars do you know that 
That's how much Fashola gave to the landowners from that money, from that $100 million that Angote paid for that is uh, refinery land. They chased all the people away, the Obas, everybody. So Fashola now made provision for $4.4 million that they shared and told them to go and find somewhere else. And all of you, if you have been to Lekki Free Trade Zone, that's actually Tifnumbu said Trade Zone. Oh. Eh? Eh. So let me kind of give you some background explanation here so that you will understand in detail, okay, what is really happening here. To Nigerians, the Nigeria is importing fuel to Nigeria is even a disgrace that they have made everyone to sort of live with. So ideally, eh, anybody with money could see an opportunity, okay, and quickly take it. And if the government is going to buy into it as well, it even makes it better. That means they can, they can pave the way for you, no wahala, nobody, yeah, from the land to construction, eh, to crude oil allocation, to uh, regulators, and all of that stuff, you know, government will pave everything. And then everybody will be fine. There will be no more importation of fuel. There will be creation of uh, at least local production that will serve the local uh, consumption. And at the same time, even like it will save the country huge amount of forex that they are expending on importing of fuel. So it's an opportunity. But the politicians that he was going to work with, somehow, somehow, maybe he has become so comfortable that he couldn't see that if they have been coming for everybody and he has been benefiting from that, is it not obvious that one day they're going to come for him? So let's go back to that lucky free trade zone. That lucky free trade zone is a place where they actually reclaim most of the land. But there were also lands there. Now you see all this zone area, eh? they call it Lekki Free Trade Zone. They have seaports there. Dangote built one for himself. Another Lekki Free, Lekki Seaport, they built one there. So it's like creating a different economy entirely, okay? However, it is not for Lagosians, it is not for Lagos, okay? Indians, Lebanese, Chinese, they have claimed massive land from the sea there. They are building and doing stuff there where the government of Nigeria, the government of Lagos, hmm, they were just there to observe. There is no real law of Nigeria that guides what's happening there. And it is the creation of Tifnumbu and his own uh, Lebanese guys. Shaguri and Shaguri probably owns half of the entire place. I'm talking about thousands, tens of thousands of hectares of uh, land reclaimed and the existing ones. They've chased people away. Chased them in Aina. This is going on right there. And that is why, you see this, your super highway, coastal highway. There's not going to be any coastal highway. Okay? So, Dangote, that they sold $100 million land to is now somehow from what is what seems to be like a ton of event, right? Is sort of being frustrated to the point that he wouldn't mind to sell it to them. And you won't be surprised <clears throat> if maybe it's going to be one Indian man fronting for Tiflumbu, one Lebanese person or a company fronting for Tiflumbu and Shaguri. They will eventually ask him to sell it in scrap and save his losses. And that is why, as uh, I said earlier, it would be a great sort of a loss to those who thought Dangote Refinery was Nigeria project that was going to command, make your lives better. 
refine 650,000 barrels of crude oil every day. Eh? Supply Nigeria, supply West Africa, mm? generate 13,000 megawatt electricity. You know, that is what Dangote Refinery will generate when it becomes fully operational. Now, some of the things they now release into the public, why did they release them? Eh? Remember when they demolished Landmark? When they demolished uh, Landmark in Lagos? It was Devulumai, an Igbo man, that was there to tell us why Landmark stole land. Eh? He did not own the beach. All the narrative was uh, directed, produced and directed by an Igbo man, Devulumai. Meanwhile, it was the plot to take the land, which was C, reclaimed by Landmark themselves, just like Dangote. They also brought engineers, sand filling the sea, sand filling the sea, until they claimed that beach front. Eh? And they said, eh, you are not supposed to claim the sea. But we had a license that says that we could, and the beach front will be our own. This is the document. No, that document is forged. Who was driving the ordinative? Devolumayi, an Igbo man, versus an Igbo business. But if Numbus associates, that one is done. And they now said, oh, yeah, we are, we are changing the plan now. Sorry that we demolished Landmark. Some of you, the area was watching me right now, wondering how deep and divided Nigeria is that you have made Nigeria because you contributed to this. Okay? Your criminal leaders, eh? those who spoke out, condemned this over $200 million business. People will destroy half of a $250 million business in that same axis. They are now coming for a $19 billion refinery. Guess what? It was a full animal, just like Dangote, that they had to send to come and tell us that Dangote refinery eh, is not complete, only 45%. In fact, Dangote petrol, Dangote diesel is the poorest product, very poor quality, low quality. Guess who they sent to say that? A full animal, Northerner, like Dangote. And who are they doing it for? Chief Kolu. Are you connecting the dot or you are still not? This is the moment you need the conspiracy theorist uh, as a friend. And I'm not talking about people who make up uh, lies. I'm talking those who can put pieces together and see through eh, the theory of conspiracies that the criminals in government, the elites, right, that they are they are perpetuating. Now, what they are perpetuating, even though this will have an adverse effect on the country, on the country's economy, on the people, they don't care. They don't. So, Alaji Dangote yesterday, let's go back to what he had to say to these uh, people. Yes, he said, no, before yesterday, you know, he's been in the media so much now, fighting for his life. He once told us, uh, two or so weeks ago, he said he has uh, the African uh, richest man. A, we need, I mean, he actually needs a visa to travel across Africa, which also impedes business. And he believes that some other people are facing the same thing across Africa. So he was advocating for easy free movements of Africans within Africa. Okay. Then a week after that, he was talking to, uh, I think, uh, yeah, it was, in fact, it was actually that same uh, summit where he briefed and he said, the oil cabas are more dangerous or something like that than uh, any other cabal. Listen. But, uh, you know, the mafia in oil, they are stronger than mafia in drugs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just to repeat so, that, mafia and oil are stronger than the mafia and drugs. I can tell is you that a that. fact? Yes, it's a fact. Did because you know the mafia and oil existed before you got into this? Uh, I know that, you know, yes, they existed, but not as strong as uh, the way that I've uh, faced them. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're very strong. Is this a global mafia? Is it Both. Is, is it local mafia? There's a local one, there's a global one, so it's all mixed up. It's and all mixed up. It's a mix, and then did they try and sabotage you? In any they point? tried. They tried all sorts. But you know, like what I told you in our interview, I told you that you know I'm uh, a person that I've been fighting all my life. You know, so I think it's part of my life to fight. Mm. <laughs> and you've won this fight, clearly. Have you won this fight? Is it over? I think eventually we won't. We will we'll def- we'll end up winning. You know why? Because the population and the government will be on our side. But, uh, you know. The- <laughs> Dangote said he believed that he would win because the government and the people would be on his side. Because initially he was complaining, okay, he was complaining that the international oil companies in Nigeria they won't sell him crude oil, Nigeria crude oil, eh? and that wasn't what they promised him. But Dang- Dangote has been economical with the truth. He should have probably told every, I mean, tell everyone then that, listen, guys, I have been deceived by the government of Bokuari. There is no crude oil for my refinery, at least not in the next 25 years. I can't, can you even believe that I, I can't use Nigerian crude oil? I mean, come out and say that, or no, he didn't say that. He accused the international oil companies eh, who have already paid for this crude oil. And they already have uh, they, you know, they have all of uh, their own receiving, I mean, receiving a parent company or whatever all over the world. So the quota system billionaire can't compete. He was, one, he was surprised that the government can't just, he thought, the, I mean, he's a billionaire, Baba. You know, easy to be billionaire that way too. I mean, even with the, with the government patronage and all of that, you know, easy. With that money, you have access to everything you need to know. Everything. So how come he didn't know that Nigeria, I mean, sorry, Bokwari have sold the future oil prospects in Nigeria? Uh-huh. The crude oil that they will extract from Nigeria in the next 25 years, Bokwari don't collect the money. Ask them, where is the money? They've sold it. So if you need any crude oil now from Nigeria, you want to buy crude oil from Nigeria, you will speak to these international oil companies who owns the oil. Or Nigerian government can probably go and give you another oil field if you can drill it yourself. Drill it until you see crude oil. And then you can begin to extract that yourself. That's another process. And then go take on me. He was wondering why they cannot just tell them to give him. Because that's the normal way. Tell them to give me now. This is Nigeria now. This is me, Dangote. Tell them. But they couldn't. Rather than help him, eh? they decided to expose him. Tell us everything we knew anyway. Something that Dangote would sit comfortably and deny. Now it's like, no, 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 no. They are coming for me. They are coming for me. But listen, guys, I've already regretted thinking of uh, venturing into a refinery. But you don't need to come for me this way, please. If you want it, come and take it. Just make me an offer. Don't grab my refinery. Don't snatch it. Please don't run with it, kind of. So I played this uh, clip yesterday. Well, not this one, but part of this yesterday. And I said, the man looks so stressed. And one more for came here. And I go, guess what he said? He said, Oh, he looks stressed. Even you, Mayogu, you look stressed. I, oh, I, I am not, right? The point of conversation. Whatever I look like, if I look old, if I look tired, if I look stressed, that is not the reason why you are facing the shege you are facing in Nigeria. Let's face that. Let's talk about that. We've gone past that stage where you will take your time and time about me. 
My ego, something is in your shin. Why are you looking at my shin? You deaf. Listen to what I am saying. Forget about my shin. Forget about what my face looks like. That is not the reason why they are killing you, kidnapping you. And as we speak, right, some of you are even killing yourselves. So leave my face. I'm not the one that took a billions from uh, the looters of Nigeria. And now these looters are coming for the entire package. Now they don't want shears anymore. After this Wahala started, eh? I mean, I told you that too. What, back in the days, eh, back in the days, people would come here to come and guide me. I was like, eh, go shit down. No. I'm talking about serious thing. You are coming here to come and talk about uh, uh, my English. Uh, there are one where they come, they will come here and say, my ego use as, it's not art, it's as, as a little ibu. So, I have, for, for, I mean, from all I have to say, now, the English, where they talk, you they pay attention to. Whether I use past tense or Uluribu. You see, people, whether they kidnap and kill in Nigeria, eh? You know, if probably speaking good English, that be whatever it is, can save lives. Seriously, a lot of them will go back and study it so hard. Even me, sir, go do um, Uluribu. So, me, or whatever I look like, whatever I wear, whatever I. Alaye, Papa Toban Shieni Lei. Then face away in your tea. Let me face the real people. So leave me out of it. If I look stressed, it may call emoji billions from your central bank. No be me. Eh? Collaborate.